In this lesson, we will talk about the types of methods in class. The methods in a class have bindings and based on that there are three types of methods. Instance methods are the methods bound to the instance or objects of the class and we have used those in our classes student and point. Then there can be the class method which are bound to the class meaning that they are meant to be applied on the class. We have seen that we can have class level data attributes and if we need an operation that involves just the class level data and not any instance, we'll be creating a class method. We'll see that in code in a moment. On the other hand, the static methods are bound neither to class and nor to the instance. We'll see their use in code in a minute. Here is our student class with these three class level data attributes. Note that all students list looks blank but whenever an object is created, it is added into this list as done in init method. To demonstrate a class method, let's suppose we want to find out the subjects in which no student is registered. For that, I need offered subjects list and all students list. Both of these are class level data attributes. So this method needs to be applied on class since it just needs class level data attributes. Remember the two names, offer subjects and all students and let's create the method. To create a class method, we decorate the method with class method decorator. Not registered subjects is the name of our method and the first input argument will be class in class method and by convention is denoted by CLS. The class level attributes will be accessed as CLS.AllStudents or any other attribute. Now the logic of this method will be to scan all of students inside all student list and check the courses attribute and compare that with offered subject list. For such case, I find data type sets in Python really, really helpful since we get a few features with no effort. For example, sets remove the duplicates by themselves. So I'll start with an empty set. Then I'll iterate over the students inside all student list. I'll convert the courses list of student to a set to use set operations. Now I can take union of this set with set A. For that I can use dot union and assign it to A or I can use dot update method. So by the end loop completes its iterations, set A will contain all subjects registered by any student without any duplicates. Now I can take the set difference of this set A with the offer subject list. For that I will convert offer subject list to a set use dot difference on it with the set A. The result will be a set containing subjects that are in offered subject list but not in set A. I can convert this to a list and directly return that. Now in main program we have three students created and a couple of subjects registered for each of those. Offered subject list is there on line 7 as comment for reference. Note that subject LA which is linear algebra is the one not registered by any student since project is registered by default. Let's check the output of our class method. The class is automatically passed in as first input argument just like the object is passed in case of instance method. We run the program and can see correct output is displayed. Now let's talk about the static method. These methods do not need instance or class. Generally, they are used to help complex logics of other methods. For example, the logic of register subject or not register subjects method might need another method for some calculation needed for them. At this moment, we will create a test static method for demonstration and later we will definitely add meaningful static methods. A static method is declared by decorating it with static method decorator. Let's define the method with name test. Static methods do not need instance or class but can have other input arguments. For example, one input argument a and let's simply return square of a. Now let's test this static method which can be called by using the class name dot name of the method followed by input arguments if any. You will see it displays the expected output. 
that's all from this lesson thanks for watching